All right, so on to the first slide. So today, so I'm going to start with a quick recap of the first lectures, uh, the introduction lectures, and then we're going to explore a few simple models. So there will be three models that are presented to you today. Uh, the first is called the Hawk and Dove model, um, which is kind of a model that's useful for political science, uh, science context, as well as uh, it actually has some behavioral uh, biology um, and bi biological game theory context, which is a little uh, kind of, you know, outside of my skill set, but I've seen it reproduced there. Um, uh, and then the second model would be uh, a model of entry and price wars. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, a historic example um, of that and, and how uh, a existing uh, company and an entering company into a market uh, will compete and whether or not it makes sense for the enter to enter at all. And then the third model will be uh, what's called the signaling model, in particular as it re re relates to uh, a job searcher and whether they should get more education or not. And that's a, another game theoretic model. So uh, those are the three we're going to be exploring today in depth. Um, but again, the takeaway here is I want you to be able to understand how a model works, what it is, but I don't expect you to solve these models. And I don't even expect you to um, necessarily understand the visual representation of, of the model. So if you're not quite familiar with that, that's fine. Um, I don't expect it. I just want you to be able to understand a model and see how economists think about them. Okay. So like I said, though, I will solve the individual models. The solution concept is not the takeaway um, until we cover game theory. So I might do some oligopoly um, modeling later on uh, where I will um, give some more game theoretic models. I don't know how much uh, I'm going to stress that though. Uh, it, it, it's the last week of lecture, and I think it, it'll be a very high-level um, takeaway, so don't don't worry about the solution concepts. Okay, what I do want you to pay attention to is how the game, how each game relates to modeling and abstraction. Um, so how you take a complex economic problem in the real world and you filter it down to its most basic premises, the, the ones that you need in order to say something meaningful. So that's abstraction. Um, how once we have the, the assumptions laid out, we then progress on a logical basis to get some to some sort of um, predictable or predictability measure. So if X and Y and Z are in place, that says something about the potential state of the world. If those three things hold, then this must be the outcome. Um, so those are that's uh, essentially using modeling as a symbolic way to represent logic and then using that logic to come out with an outcome. And then number three is the application of economics to non-economic questions. And this relates to the last slide um, from the last lecture where I talked about kind of this idea of economic imperialism where we have a set of economic methodologies and we'll apply them to something that might not be considered economics as you know the, the general populace is familiar with it. So the first model is more of a po politics uh, question. It's more about uh, international relations and the applications tend to be more in the line of international relations. So you could apply it broadly, like I said, behavioral biology um, uses the same exact model just in a different context. The second model is more or less, you know, standard boilerplate economics. Um, it deals with oligopolies and, and enter, entering the market. So that that's probably something more familiar with, you know, your preconceived notion of what economics is. The third one kind of is a little bit in between. Um, it's this idea that you can use education as a signal um, rather than using the actual education and the skills you learn as a uh, to make you more productive. Um, so a little bit of, of all three, but um, signaling theory has its importance uh, outside of just, you know, boilerplate economics or economics as we commonly understand. 
and then the fourth would be the societal implications of a model and also the societal implications of um, the abstractions that you and the assumptions that you make in a model and how they if you make too many abstractions how that might actually affect um, societal society if, if you presume that the model is a thousand percent correct.